Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to SIU, Southern Illinois University Automotive Department. Uh, my name is Mike Bierman, and I am the director of the School of Automotive here at SIU. And joining me, uh, we have a few of our current students. I'll start uh, here with Stephanie. Stephanie, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Stephanie Bennett. I am a sophomore this year in the automotive program, and uh, I'm helping out with this because I am uh, an automotive ambassador. Okay, well, thank you, Stephanie, for joining us. And then also we have Grace joining us. Hello, my name is Grace Galima. I'm also a transfer student uh, from a community college. I'm a non-graduating senior this year. Okay, but graduation soon to come. Soon, a little scary. <laughs> But uh, what we've got planned uh, this evening is that we're going live out on our YouTube as well as our Facebook pages for the department. And if you have questions, please go ahead and post up any questions that you may have in the chat. Uh, we have some people working behind the scenes monitoring those. May answer those actually in the chat, but some of them they may actually write down and bring to us here this evening and we'll work to get those addressed. We also received uh, several uh, emails earlier as well with questions ahead of time. And so thought we'll go ahead and we can start with some of those. But uh, one of the first questions was really, uh, tell me a little bit about what can you do with a four-year automotive program? Well, SIU Automotive, it's a very unique four-year Bachelor of Science degree in automotive technology. And our graduates combine advanced technical classes as well as automotive business and management courses as well as what we're going to talk about some general education classes together into a baccalaureate degree and with that degree they find numerous opportunities for internships uh, full-time hire opportunities with a multitude of different companies at some very good starting salaries our last May graduation class their starting salaries ranged from $50,000 to $75,000. And the typical graduate actually will be accepting a job offer prior to graduation. And so they're going into positions working for the major manufacturers like General Motors, Toyota, Nissan, Ford Motor Company. But they're also going to the truck manufacturers such as Navistar or our major suppliers like uh, Eaton Transmissions, Ally Financial. Cummins Diesel Engines, uh, Robert Bosch Corporation. You'll find numerous opportunities for our graduates going into these different areas. And so really to start with, I'm gonna to go to Stephanie and Grace and ask them, what are your career goals? What do you hope to be doing with a degree from SIU Automotive? We'll start here with Stephanie. Um, so I'm more interested in more of the business aspect of the automotive field. Um, I'm very interested in becoming maybe like a regional manager for a certain uh, car brand or uh, just something more along the lines of that. While I love the technical field, I excel a lot more at the business aspect. Great. So. Great. Awesome. And then Grace, what, what are your career goals once you graduate? Honestly, I really love the diagnosing and hands-on approach. So I'm thinking, you know, eventually work my way up into field service engineer. Uh, so you don't get that right out the get-go when coming from into a new company. But you can work your way up, and some people move laterally, vertically, however you wish. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you just put your work into a best foot forward. Awesome. Yeah, so you're going to find uh, opportunities uh, both on the business side as well as the technical side. And earlier uh, this morning when we did our live stream, uh, we also had Anna, another one of our students, and her passion is actually into the teaching area, the technical training. And so she's looking at becoming a high school instructor, community college instructor, or maybe even a technical instructor for one of the corporations and teaching and training technicians. And so when you think about some of the different types of jobs, uh, Stephanie and Grace both alluded to some of these, but think about the job of a technician. Anything that a technician needs to do their job, there are tons of people working behind the scenes to develop the diagnostic procedures, the service procedures, or there's also areas of serviceability engineering. Serviceability engineering is if you ever worked on something, you go, who in their right mind designed this? If they would have moved this bolt over here or done that or... I can see the bolt, but I can't get my wrench on the bolt. If you ever experienced some of that, you can tell we need more serviceability engineers 
to help us design more serviceable product, to help our technicians diagnose the products, to repair the products. If they need special tools and equipment, who develops that? Who's going to be training the technicians? Or with Stephanie, she mentioned becoming a district manager. Think about the dealership and that dealership business. We need individuals that are going to be able to be regional managers to go out and help those service departments and parts departments to be profitable, to be satisfying our customers out there. And so, again, a lot of different opportunities. One of the first questions, probably the most popular question that we had come in earlier, was what are some of the classes like, especially now with COVID going on? What, can you, either of you sort of explain uh, what are some of your classes like, whether you're in the automotive technical or some of the automotive business classes? What's going on in those classes right now? Um, yeah, so right now I'm taking a couple general education classes, and then I'm also in an automotive class. I'm actually in the same class as Grace right now. Mm. And uh, for my general education classes, they are online, and I'm t currently taking the online anytime classes. So basically that's a class that's online. You take it at your own pace, and basically you just have a deadline for the work for the week. Um, I find that that works very well for, you know, my schedule, and it's very – a lot of the classes at SIU are very accommodating of schedules and stuff like that. Um, but for the automotive classes, those are in person right now. Um, they're very um, safe with all the uh, COVID regulations and everything like that. Everybody's wearing masks, social distancing, everything's being disinfected after use, um, just kind of avoiding any possible contamination of anything pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, in your technical class, both of you are in technical class right now, yep. uh, about how much time do you spend actually uh, sort of in lecture demonstration versus maybe being out in the lab hands-on? So I find with our uh, breaks class that Stephanie and I are currently in right now, it's some days it'll be a little more lecture because there's a lot of theory involved. And then some other days it'll be split even, two hours lecture, two hours lab. Okay. Uh, I am taking a second technical course as well, and that seems to be more, a little less lecture, but a lot more lab because we're implementing faults. We're discovering why we have emissions reading, why our readings are like this, and diving more into OB diagnostics. Okay, great. Uh, you'll see as well uh, the classes. We do strive for uh, about a 50-50 mix on your courses. And then transferring to SIU. Uh, we're trying to focus on transfer students this evening, but if we have some new incoming uh, uh, freshman students joining us, that's fine as well. But transfer students, you can transfer to SIU your gen some of your general education classes that you might be taking at a community college. And I, I believe... Uh, both of you might have done that. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yep. I, oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. I transferred with an associate's degree. Okay. So. All right. And then? And then I did not transfer with an associate's degree, but I did take uh, as many general education classes as I could before I came just to kind of get those out of the way at a community college local to me. And they transferred over great. Um, I worked both with my advisor here and the one at my community college, and all my credits transferred pretty evenly and Okay. Uh, no issues with that. Great. Uh, so if you're looking at transferring your general education classes, that seems to be a fairly uh, seamless process. But also, if you are working and achieving an associate degree at a community college, you're getting your associate degree in, say, automotive technology, something like that, and you're looking to continue on, your technical classes as well, we bring those into the program. And so if you're transferring with a typical student transferring with a two-year associate degree in automotive technology, coming into the four-year automotive technology degree at SIU, you've already completed your lower-level technical courses. And your technical classes you would take at SIU, you are primarily going to be focused on taking, uh, at a minimum, 15 credit hours at our upper-level technical division. So in this area you'll have a multitude of different options. You can actually sort of pick and choose your courses towards what you're passionate about, what you want to learn more about. And so if you are one that said, you know, hey, I, I took an automatic transmission class at my former school, but uh, we didn't get into uh, CVT transmissions or we didn't get into a lot of the 10-speed, 12-speed automatic transmissions. Well, we have a 
completely focused automatic transmission course where you can get into those types of subjects. Or maybe you want to learn more about, like behind me here, we have a large semi-truck, but also if you wanted to learn more about diesel, uh, advanced diesel performance and emissions, if you wanted to learn about uh, uh, commercial truck uh, networking and electronic systems, we have a courses separated on those. Or maybe you want to learn more about hybrid vehicles, electrical propulsion vehicles, or maybe even autonomous uh, technology systems that are coming out on today's vehicles. We have separate classes on those as well. So our upper level technical classes allow you to refine sort of what you're interested in. We, have, we offer more technical, hands-on technical classes than any other program out there. In fact, that we offer more than what you can actually take in four years with us on the classes. So you can adjust your degree towards what you want to learn more about and what you're passionate about. The other aspect we talked about is that there's some business management courses as well too. And your automotive business management courses will be things such as automotive data uh, management, which is where you're really learning how to use Microsoft Excel to pull out the data to make business decisions. Or you're going to take a class such as automotive fixed operations management, which is a service management type of a class. Automotive parts management, automotive warranty, uh, automotive financial management. And so these are some of the types of automotive business and management classes that you can take. Uh, you'll have a regiment of, a, again, a minimum of 15 credit hours that you'll need to take in that particular area. And then we have a whole other category of courses called support courses. And this is where you can take even more technical. So if you want to make the most technical degree, hands-on technical degree that is actually offered, you can actually take even an additional 15 credit hours of technical classes. Or if you wanted to take even more automotive business and management classes, you can take more of those. And so as you start piecing together your curriculum, if you want to teach, we'll put you in some education classes. As you package your classes together, this is where you can now start building minors or emphasis areas, such as maybe a minor in uh, advanced vehicle systems and diagnostics or a minor in automotive truck and equipment management. We have those options. You also have options for dual majors as you're going through the program as well. So a multitude of different options uh, with the classes that you would be taking for your four-year degree and transferring in. Uh, another question that seems to come up uh, is what are the typical class sizes? Can either of you sort of explain what, how many students are in some of your classes? So definitely under 20, a more average is about somewhere between, so like your beginner, um, like 100, 200 level classes, you may see 15 on average, but then once you get to 300 or 400 level courses, you may see close to 12 or mm. less. Okay. Yeah, for the oh, very go, go ahead. for the automotive classes, they're fairly small uh, class sizes, no more than twenty in just about any class setting. Um, and even for the general education classes, they're still very small class sizes, very one on one um, kind of, not one on one, but very personal experience with your instructor. Just you know that mm -hmm. extra attention to making sure that you pass yeah. the class. Yeah, uh, here at SIU, we're known for the quality of our students and what they are learning here in this program. And a core piece of that is the amount of time that we get to spend with our students. Uh, our students get to know us. Uh, we get to know them. Uh, we say that you become part of our family and we protect each other in this family as well. And so being part of this family is that time that you're gonna be spending with us is that uh, that's important to you. That's important to us because we want you to become the best that you possibly can with your chosen career area that you want to go into. And so, yes, small class sizes are a, a core piece of what we want to be accomplishing with SIU Automotive. Uh, we already talked about some of the careers and the salaries and things like that. Uh, Stephanie, you mentioned that you want to become a district manager, and uh, Grace, you talked maybe something like a, a field service engineer. What are some of the companies that you might be interested in? Um, so currently I would be more interested towards like uh, FCA or maybe possibly GM, um, but currently I'm doing a co-op for Case New Holland where I'm a field service manager intern, 
and that's kind of one of the companies that doesn't necessarily recruit through SIU, but there are plenty of amazing companies that do, and even if maybe a company that doesn't recruit through here catches your eye, our degree is very good just about anywhere. Okay, okay, and, and Grace, is there a particular company you're sort of focused on or area or something like that besides, you said field service engineer, yeah. but... So I've been more focused on, you know, airports like uh, Toyota. I'm also interested in Honda or Mazda, and they don't recruit out here. But with this degree, you can really show what type of skill sets you yeah. have, you specialize in, and, and sell yourself to them. You can reach out to them. It's just we have mm -hmm. the, the tools to prepare yourself here. Yeah, one of the things is that uh, it's, during COVID right now, it is difficult for the companies to be traveling to be coming. But we do have a lot of engagement opportunities with our students with these companies. I know we've had several virtual sessions with many of the companies, but in a typical non-COVID type of period, hopefully this next fall, uh, we're going to be into that mm -hmm. type of a situation. But a uh, typical uh, student coming into SIU Automotive, we tell them to come prepared to interview, meaning bring your interviewing clothes, bring a prepared resume, because we try to push the companies back to about week three, week four, something like that. But after that, we have two, three, sometimes four companies here a week requesting to see your resume, uh, to start uh, getting engaged with them, to start learning about them, uh, and for you as students to start learning about many of the different career opportunities. Uh, and so right now with COVID, we've had uh, fewer co companies coming, but the job opportunities, we have them contacting us each and every week. So Mazda, Honda, Toyota, and FCA, and General Motors that you guys mentioned, yeah, they're wanting graduates. They, they have a huge need for our graduates. Sort of related to that, we did have a question come in on our chat, uh, and that reminds me as well, if you do have questions, uh, whether you're joining us on Facebook or YouTube, Go ahead and put any questions that you have up into the chat. We're monitoring those. But a question that came in is, do you offer internship or job placement assistance? Uh, either of you want to sort of uh, talk about that just a little bit. So far as uh, we get the tools to help interview, it really is up to us to prepare and practice. We have all kinds of peers that will help us interview, practice our star-based questions, build our resume, uh, we got some really awesome professors here that will take a look and heavily criticize, like constructive criticism on your resume. And again, it all helps build you up, but it's still up to you to practice and put your best foot forward. Yeah, and that's that's an interesting piece as we were sort of talking about coming prepared to interview. Uh, it's because you need a good resume. Uh, when you come in, have that resume. We're going to start off, actually, the first couple of weeks of the semester, we will have some inter uh, resume writing workshops as well as some interviewing skills workshops. In the resume writing workshops, you'll learn how to get your resume tweaked and adjusted for what the industry is expecting to be seeing from you. And then in the interviewing workshops, they're going to be walking you through what to sort of expect in that interview process. Now, the manufacturers, major suppliers, uh, companies that are coming in to be recruiting our SIU automotive students, they know what you're going to be learning in this degree. Uh, they're passionate about SIU automotive. They are very connected to SIU automotive, so they know what you're going to be learning in your classes. However, they want to know how do you think? How do you react in different situations? How do you behave? What are uh, So they're going to be asking you maybe a few technical questions or industry-related questions, but then they're going to get into these behavioral questions or situational-based questions. Uh, Grace mentioned the STAR technique, which is a process of how to address and answer some of those. And so with these, you may have questions such as, give me a time when you had a, or a situation when you were working in a team or a small group and one of the team members wasn't really working very hard, uh, wasn't contributing to the team as much. Tell me about that situation. What did you do about that situation? And then what were the results from that? What did you learn from that? So they want to hear how do you think, how do you react to different types of situations. And so also related to that, uh, we were talking about the internship and job placement assistance. Uh, again, we have a multitude of companies contacting us, manufacturers, major suppliers, for both paid corporate internships 
as well as full-time hires. Uh, so we have uh, faculty members here that will critique your resumes. We actually have a group on main campus called the uh, Career uh, Placement, uh, Career Development Center. And there, they, you can actually do mock interviews, uh, get you prepared for those situational-based types of questions. And so, yes, we do provide a lot of uh, assistance for internships and job placement. Uh, Speaking about internships, uh, you were mentioning you're serving an internship with Case New Holland? Yeah, so currently I'm working for them doing a remote co-op, so I'm able to still go to school full-time and then also work for them um, just from here in Carbondale, and I started that in January, and I'll be doing that until August, and it's I'm a field service manager intern, and I love it. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made, um, and there is no lack of resources anywhere around here to help you get an internship. Mm -hmm. If you put in the work, you can most definitely make it happen. And do you see that these internships are paid internships? Yes. Almost, I, from what I understand, almost all of them are paid uh, nowadays. So. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we pretty much require the industry to be paying <laughs> you. Uh, so if you're going to be working with them. Now, internships, as Stephanie mentioned, is that she's currently doing an internship, uh, sort of a mm -hmm. virtual internship mm -hmm. with the company right now. But a vast majority of the internships are also going to be on site during the summer months, oftentimes. Mm -hmm. And depending upon the company and the location, things like that, you'll find that most internships, uh, they'll pay roughly $18, $24 an hour, some, somewhere in that range. But you'll also find that some of these internships will also provide fully furnished uh, company paid for apartments to live in. Some of them also offer company cars. Mm -hmm. And these internships are well, all over the United States, typically at uh, one of their regional offices or at their North American headquarters here in the United States on that. And so, yes, a lot of opportunities with internships and, and placement services there a little bit. Uh, another question that came in earlier uh, that we have here is uh, the application process. We had a couple questions focused around the application process and how to start that, how do you go about applying to SIU? Well, you can do that at the main SIU website, which is siu.edu. At the very top of that page, uh, you'll find at the very top uh, a link, a button, it says apply. That's where you start the application process. And speaking about the application process, uh, how soon should a student maybe apply if they're interested in SIU Automotive? Can you sort of explain when did you start your application process? So I started my application process uh, as soon as possible. I found out, you know, for transfer scholarships, it was for fall semester, so I did apply, but I ended up waiting a year just so I can have additional assistance coming down here, which it pays off. And so. Okay, okay. And Stephanie? Um, yeah, I agree with Grace. Just start um, as soon as you can, just so you can get any scholarship applications in. Um, there are plenty of scholarship applications that you can find on the school's website. There are also plenty of automotive, um, external automotive scholarships. Um, so yeah, just as soon as possible, pretty much. Okay. Uh, and so, yes, we do recommend to try to start about a year ahead of time if you possibly can. But the biggest thing is apply. Get, get your application rolling right now. We are in the uh, selection, review and selection process for our next fall uh, 2021 starting class. Uh, so if this is something that you might be interested in, I highly encourage you to get your application process started. Uh, let's see, we had a few more questions come in as well too here on the chat. Uh, one uh, here a little bit is, uh, we'll start with this one. What is the capstone option? Well, the capstone option, those of you that are looking at transferring from a community college with your two-year associate degree, uh, typically it's a two-year associate in applied science degree in automotive technology, automotive service, something like that. Transferring to SIU with that associate degree, you've already proven yourself being successful in college. And there are a couple of different requirements for the capstone option, but if you can transfer to SIU, you can all, your, your technical classes, as well as bring in roughly four or five of your general education classes, 
we see that you're successful in these by looking at your GPA and how you performed in those courses. And with that, you may qualify for the capstone option. The capstone option will then actually reduce the number of general education classes that you need to take for your baccalaureate degree. And so instead of maybe two humanities courses that you would need to take, as a capstone option, you may only need to take one of the humanities courses for your degree. And so the capstone option is a uh, opportunity to really uh, provide an advantage to the transfer students coming in because you've already proven yourself to be successful in college. So that's the, trans, uh, the capstone option piece there. Uh, sort of another one related towards that that we also got in is how do I transfer my courses? And so, uh, Stephanie, you want to sort of address that one. How do you go about, if you're taking courses at a community college, what should a student do to get those transferred? Yeah, um, so basically I just talked to my academic advisor at the um, uh, community college that I took them at, and she kind of got most of that squared away. She took care of a lot of it. Um, and then just sent my official script, transcript over, and then they were able to get everything transferred. Okay. And Grace, was the experience pretty similar for you as well? Similar. The community college I was at, you just talk to your academic advisor where kind of where you want to go. They take care of it, and then you just send in your official transcripts with your application. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, it'll start at your community college. Uh, you, you can look online. Some community colleges offer uh, the the transcript services and sending transcripts uh, electronically online, so you can look that way. If not, talk to your academic advisor at your community college and tell them that you're interested in transferring your courses to Southern Illinois University Carbondale, and they'll get you started in that process. You want to, uh, besides just sending your transcripts, you also want to make sure that you are applying to SIU by filling out the SIU application because those two pieces sort of need to uh, merge and come together. They need to see the application, plus they also need to see the transcripts, and that way we, they can get all that put together, and so that way we can then be reviewing uh, the students for acceptance then into the SIU automotive program. And so, yeah, the uh, transferring your courses, it's a fairly seamless process on, on doing that. Uh, another question here, uh, sort of related towards classes, things again on here is how do I go about enrolling in classes and when does advisement start? And so enrolling in classes, uh, you first start with, again, the application and applying to SIU, getting accepted into the SIU Automotive Technology Program. And then we will, actually our academic advisors, we have two dedicated automotive academic advisors and we will then be reaching out to you about scheduling an advisement appointment. And once you have that advisement appointment, uh, we'll be working with you on some of the different class options, identify what courses you're sort of interested in, and the advisors will work with you on providing you the codes and where to go online to actually then register for those classes on that. Uh, Stephanie, Grace, either you want to talk about the advisement process or anything like that, or uh, talk about our uh, the academic advisement uh, mm -hmm. pieces there a little bit. Anything you want to expand upon? So uh, I noticed with advisement, it, they're really knowledgeable on like what you kind of expect with the courses. So if you had a question, uh, maybe a description of one course wasn't quite clear enough for you, you can ask them. Uh, they know kind of general what, what you should see going through that course. They also help you work, um, use degree works, which helps plan even further semesters towards your bachelor's degree. It'll okay. help you through that too. Okay, and Stephanie, about advisement? Um, yep, it's a very uh, simple process. You just basically get it scheduled. And then um, one thing that I recommend is just making sure that you look ahead at um, kind of the course descriptions and all of that, especially if say you do need another general education class, just kind of get an idea of what you may want to take and then kind of lay out um, your options and what you think might work best for you. And then they can help hammer in all the details and make sure that you're doing what's best to make sure that you graduate on time. Oh, yeah. Uh, one piece that Grace mentioned as well, too, is this thing called degree works. 
And so at SIU, we have a platform called DegreeWorks. And this is sort of your plan, your degree plan. So if you want to see uh, what courses transferred in, what courses you've already completed towards the baccalaureate degree, or if you want to see what courses are yet required for your baccalaureate degree, you can track that 24-7 on a platform that we have called DegreeWorks. If you want to see what is your current grade point average, uh, what was your transfer grade point average, all, what is your major grade point average, uh, what courses do you have yet, that is all in DegreeWorks. You also have the unique feature of a thing that's called what if. So if you wanted to add a minor, you can go in and plug in a minor, and it shows you what courses you might have already completed towards that minor, and yet what additional courses you might need. So it is your 24-7 degree plan is on this platform that we have to help aid students on navigating uh, their degree in degree works. Now, again, I want to remind everybody that if you do have questions, we are uh, live right now on our YouTube as well as our Facebook channels. And if you do have questions, you can go ahead and post some of those up into the chat. We are monitoring the chat. Uh, if for some reason that uh, you can't get a question posted up or anything like this, you can always email us, even after this session that we're going through, you can always email us at autotech, which is A-U-T-O-T-E-C-H, at SIU.edu, as well as you can always call us at 618-453-4024, and those should be up on your video feed right now as well along with our website where we have all kinds of information uh, for you that you can see. Another piece that um, I believe, Stephanie, you mentioned earlier were scholarships. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about scholarships. Everybody needs some additional funding to help them in their education. Uh, either you want to talk a little bit about some of the scholarship opportunities. Um, so I know that uh, once you get accepted via uh, on SalukiNet, which is kind of the website that has everything that you're going to need to access as a student, uh, it has all of the links and everything in one easy little area. There's something called the general scholarship application, and those are for kind of more campus-wide scholarships. Also, there are automotive degree-specific applications, and I believe that those are open in the fall, usually around September and August. Mm -hmm. um, also, there are external automotive scholarships, and all of those can be found on the automotive website. And those, the application dates kind of vary. I know that there's some that are open during the spring, but the large majority of ap or scholarship applications close in like fall, so that's why you kind of want to apply early and get those completed as soon as you can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can go to our website, uh, the SIU Automotive website, which is automotive.siu.edu, and on your left-hand side, you'll see a link called Finances. Clicking on that, you can go in and you scroll down towards the bottom of that particular page, you'll find a link called External Automotive Scholarships. There are several of our industry partners that we work with on developing scholarships. But go take a look. There's three, four pages of scholarships, I think, there. Each have varying different deadlines, things like that, that you can actually start applying for some of these right now. They love seeing students interested in SIU Automotive applying for these scholarships. And so highly encourage you to take a look at those particular scholarships. Then, as you are preparing to join us here at SIU Automotive, the university also has a general scholarship page, and that's scholarships.siu.edu. And there you complete this one general scholarship application, and it looks at all the wide variety of scholarships that we have available here at the university that you can start, that, that it will actually put you into that applicant pool automatically just by filling out that one application. And then the third aspect on scholarships is SIU Automotive itself. We work with a lot of our industry partners in fundraising and gathering money and through our own endowments that we have. We generate funds and then we work to get those funds right on out to our students as well. And so, yes, there are a lot of different scholarship opportunities available, uh, not only for incoming freshman students, but also a lot of transfer students as well too. Uh, the university actually has a whole separate transfer scholarship. Sort of related around scholarships, a 
couple questions we had come in earlier were sort of related around tuition and fees and sort of what are, what are the tuition and fees uh, that students were sort of asking about. Well, when you're looking at any school that you're thinking about possibly going to, uh, I say sometimes don't just look at the tuition. You want to look at the tuition and any fees that might be applicable for that particular program that you're looking at. And so at SIU, we tell students expect uh, to uh, or plan for about roughly around $7,000 in tuition and fees each semester. Now, that is going to vary based upon the number of credit hours that you're taking. But one of the other aspects about tuition and fees here at SIU is that once you start at SIU, your tuition is locked in, uh, meaning that it's locked in for four years, meaning any tuition increases will not affect you. The other aspect about tuition and fees, some of you may be coming from another state. We have students here from Carolinas, Texas, Michigan, uh, Colorado, uh, you name it. We have students here in the program, it seems, from all over the place. But uh, SIU, we are a global university. And so with students coming from all over, we do not charge out-of-state tuition rates. So any students coming to us from a state other than Illinois, you will pay the same tuition as our in-state students pay. Um, we, so again, we have students from all over. The other aspect sort of related towards tuition and fees, we talked about scholarships, but SIU, we have a whole separate financial aid department here at SIU that will work with you on looking for and applying for a variety of different grants and aid types of packages. Uh, that group is phenomenal in putting together different options for you. It's to the point that here at SIU, we provide over $10 million a year in aid, in scholarships, uh, and grants out to our students. And so we work hard to help ensure that whatever your passion is, we're here to try to help you achieve those passions by helping fund your education. Uh, anything on uh, tuition, fees, things like that that uh, I might have missed that you can think of? I was getting into very specifics, but with um, automotive technology classes, there is a, usually a lab fee. They can range somewhere from like 60 to 120-ish, but that covers a lot of things that we have a lot of diagnostic tools here such as picos um, there's also supplies office supplies like uh, printers so we can print out and reuse our wiring diagrams and so forth but it, it covers a lot for okay a small price yep uh, another piece uh, sort of related towards finances as well too uh, people that they may not be living in the our general vicinity here is housing costs uh, so besides paying for your education, you also need to pay for housing. And we have a wide variety of different housing options available for the students. And uh, Stephanie, we'll probably start with you. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what are some of the housing options? Yeah, so last year I lived in the dorms. Uh, I lived on East Campus, and that is one great option, uh, especially for transfer students if you don't really know anybody. Um, those are set up kind of suite style where there's a dorm and then you have your own dorm room and it's attached to another dorm room via like a bathroom shower area. Um, so you have your own bathroom, you have your own shower. The rooms are very spacious, they're very nice. And like I said, they are suite style and I believe they still are um, where the dorm room is just yours. You don't have any roommates or anything like that. Um, and that's very good because I know that there are a lot of options for housing scholarships also. Mm -hmm, um, and mm -hmm. then currently I'm living um, in the university owned apartments that are wall and grand. And those are also another great option. Um, it's about four bedrooms, two bathrooms. And one thing that's nice about that is uh, depending on the scholarship, you can use that towards uh, the room and board for wall and grand. And then also um, it's just, it's paid in a lump sum with your tuition and everything like that. So you don't have to worry about like the monthly costs and everything like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Stephanie was uh, mentioning about some of the housing options that we have on campus. And some of those, uh, uh, we have the residence hall type of housing. The nice thing about the residence hall uh, style of housing is that you do get a private room. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, most students I talk to, that room is larger than the room they have back at home uh, because actually in that room you have your own sink. You actually have two beds, two closets, two dressers. So if you have a friend that wants to come and visit for the weekend, uh, they don't have to sleep on the floor. They actually have a bed they can crash on. Uh, but the other piece, nice piece about that is that all of your utilities, uh, your uh, high-speed internet, uh, your dining at any time type of plan is all included in that one, one lump sum. Another piece with housing, though, is if you're interested, uh, is there's off-campus housing. And Grace, uh, I believe you, you live off-campus, you were saying earlier, is that correct? I do live off-campus. Uh, so I had made a special day to come out here, and there's tons of off-campus uh, housing, but they're still within maybe like five minutes of main campus or even 15 minutes to the Transportation Education Center here. So it's not like you had to go to the next town over. You're still really close to campus. Uh, you're close to facilities such as the library or um, computer labs in, in your classrooms. So. Okay. And you get to kind of pick and choose like what you look for in an apartment, say a washer dryer. That's very important to me <laughs> 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 rather than going to a laundromat. <laughs> Yep. Okay. So. Yep. And so all around the Carbondale community, around the Carbondale campus, you're also going to find apartment complexes, townhomes, a wide variety, houses themselves for rent. And if you're looking for a garage, there's actually, I know some of the automotive students, they're specifically looking for a house with a garage. Mm -hmm. so, something about automotive students, they're always wanting to work on cars and trucks for some reason. But uh, yeah, so there's a wide variety of different housing options. And of course, at a wide variety of different price points as well, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that, that's going to vary up quite a bit on that. Uh, so there are a lot of housing options uh, out there. Uh, another piece, uh, thought I saw a question here, sort of uh, was on this one. We sort of uh, hit this one already a little bit. But how was the transition process from your previous school? Uh, we sort of talked about the, the steps that you had to take, but uh, how comfortable was it? How was, how was your, your, the whole process of coming to SIU? Do uh, you guys want to sort of expand upon that a little bit? Oh, well, stuff you start. <laughs> okay. Um, it was very easy. Like I said, I um, came in as a freshman, but I did take a lot of classes over the summer before my freshman year. Um, and those are what I transferred over, but everything was a very seamless process. Um, like I was mentioning earlier, the academic advisor at my local community college took care of all of it. Um, and it was just very, a very seamless, very easy process. Okay. Uh, were you scared, uh, starting in, in a whole new place and moving and all that? Um, it, it's a little scary. It's definitely different and change can be pretty scary sometimes, but, um, you know, the first week there's plenty of like welcoming events, uh, at least before COVID started and everything like that, where there were plenty of events on main campus, uh, where you could go meet new people, make new friends. Um, there's also like a couple things around here where you have opportunities to get to know each other and especially like living in the, um, residence halls there's I lived in the living learning community uh, which it was basically just a floor of all automotive students so obviously we had a lot in common so it was very easy to make friends there and just kind of get to know everyone around me uh, a little bit easier okay yeah and so uh, you mentioned the living learning community that's actually one of the housing options that's available in our residence halls we have three floors dedicated for SIU automotive students and so it's, uh, if you want to uh, be around other students that have your same passion, you sort of have instant friends, essentially, because they have the same passion as you on that with the living learning community. But another piece is uh, are making the transition more comfortable as well. You talked about some of the engagement opportunities that we have for students to get involved, to get to know each other, uh, whether they're students that are in your classes or other classes or other automotive students, other students around. Uh, how comfortable was that for you, Grace? And what were some of the things that you, uh, you did to get involved? So I started off kind of small and get to know the classmates I was in my first class transferring here. But then from there, because they were mostly all in the living learning 
um, community and those resident halls. Mm -hmm. I met more people through them and, you know, became nice, close net relationships with them. And from there, even just outside here on main campus, there's so many ways, uh, activities, you can meet other people. Um, if you're doing general classes, that's one way too. But I couldn't say it better than uh, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know another piece, in fact, both of you are involved in some other outside activities. Not only are you going to be focused in on the automotive industry while you're in classes, but we have a lot of things going on outside of classes as well, too. A lot of student groups, uh, things like that. Do either mm -hmm. of you want to talk about maybe some of the student groups and some of their activities that you get involved in? Um, yeah, so I know Grace and I are both part of uh, WAT, which is Women in Automotive Transportation Technology. And we do all sorts of events. We have game nights. We have, um, when COVID wasn't a thing, we had movie uh, nights, uh, just little, maybe like a luncheon at the beginning of the year. Uh, but currently right now, I know Grace knows we're doing like virtual game nights and stuff like that. Um, there's also automotive technology organization, um, which that typically meets uh, one night during a week. And we have a work night where we get to work on some of our project cars that the school has. And then some of those teams either go drag racing or autocrossing. Um, also, there's automotive ambassadors, which is more of like a leadership and outreach uh, sort of thing. And that's another thing that Grace and I are both involved in. Okay, awesome. And so I uh, thought we'd talk about each of these just a little bit on here. Uh, you mentioned what? I know I competed with you in the pumpkin carving <laughs> yeah. contest uh, that we had, <laughs> and I lost. But... <laughs> Uh, but uh, Grace, you're, you're also involved in Watt as well, and uh, the, that is, stands for the Women of Automotive Transportation Technology. This is the nation's only uh, women's focused group at universities anywhere, and their passion is to uh, open up the doors and opportunities and help mentor uh, other females or those that are interested in diversifying our industry. And so it's a, it's a great student group on that. Another student group you talked about was our automotive technology organization, and they get involved in some of the um, more uh, uh, social types of things as well, too, to where they have a drag racing team, which is a 66 Chevy Nova 2 Supersport that students drive, students break, students have fundraisers to buy the parts <laughs> and pieces or the $10 a gallon fuel that it seems to burn all the time. <laughs> uh, but then they also have an autocross racing team. And that's a Honda Del Sol that they use to autocross. Autocross racing is a parking lot with cones and it's a timed event around the cones. They're building up a second drag racing team with a LS engine that they're working on uh, putting into an S10 truck, pickup truck. And then they also have some restoration teams. The restoration teams, I believe they have a uh, 59 Rambler, a 72 MG convertible, and a 54 Chevy truck. And then we also have the SIU off-road team. And they're building up a trail rig, and they go out to the Shawnee National Forest and camping trips and uh, off-road trails, things like that they get involved in. And now you mentioned that you're both actually involved in the SIU ambassadors. Mm -hmm. uh, Grace, uh, what, what's the ambassadors about? So ambassadors is rep help representing the program as a whole to uh, corporate, um, to outside community, families, incoming students, you name it. We are kind of the face. So you can tell us apart with this gray shirt that we're wearing. Um, okay. Now, does the ambassadors, if a student um, has questions about uh, – how to get involved in doing things here at SIU. Do, do the ambassadors help with some of those things as well? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, pretty much as a new student, if you have any questions, if you find someone in a gray shirt, uh, you could ask them just about anything, and I think they'd be more than happy to help, okay. especially if maybe you're struggling in a class or something. They can help uh, set you up with someone to help tutor you. Um, we also help set up for the info sessions that you were mentioning earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of overall try to be a good face for the program. Okay. Um, another question is, uh, we're here at the Transportation Education Center. Uh, we're approximately five miles from the main SIU campus. 
Uh, how, did, how do you get back and forth between the main campus and here? Um, so when I was a freshman, I didn't have a vehicle on campus with me. Um, and obviously carpooling with friends is a great option, especially if you're living in the residence halls and the living learning community because you're either in the afternoon block or the morning block, so typically you can find a ride. Um, or there's a great bus system on campus, and that's free for all students. You just, um, I believe there's a QR code that you have to get from SalukiNet, but other than that, you just hop on, and the website is very good. It shows you where all the buses are, it tracks them, and then it has all the bus routes, and it can get you just about anywhere in town. Yeah, and so the Saluki Express, uh, it's a free bus service that runs back and forth between uh, our campus and the main campus every hour. Its schedule is set up around your automotive schedule, but also, it, as Stephanie mentioned, it goes all around the Carbondale campus and throughout the Carbondale community. In fact, it even has some routes that go to like St. Louis and things like that for the students. And that's a free service for, for the students. Uh, another question is, uh, what is the facility and campus like? Uh, any of you want to sort of explain what is the what is the SIU Transportation Education Center facility like? Um, so the uh, Transportation edu Education Center facility um, itself is an absolutely amazing facility. Um, I know that I personally, when I took a tour of it, I just fell in love and knew that this is what I wanted to do. Um, but there's plenty of space. There are three labs, plenty of classrooms. The classrooms are also very spacious. Um, there's plenty of parking outside, and there's a break room for if you kind of spend longer days here with a microwave and some vending machines. Um, and then there's across the there's the main hallway, and across from it is uh, all of the um, facilities offices and everything like that. And it's pretty easy to, if you have a question for like a professor or something or need to talk to your academic advisor, it's pretty easy to get into contact with them just right across the hall. Yeah, so here at the Transportation Center, which houses SIU Automotive, uh, the, you were mentioning the main hallway that's outside. Uh, that's a little over two and a half football fields in length. And so it's a big facility. Uh, we actually have, actually we're coming to you live within uh, our Advanced Propulsion Systems Lab right now. And in this particular lab, it's approximately 12,000 square foot. And here students are learning about the advanced diesel propulsion systems, advanced gasoline, uh, fuel and emission systems, or even your advanced electrical propulsion types of systems. Uh, those would be some of the types of classes that you can be taking in these particular labs. We also have a wide variety of uh, component labs as well, so you'll see engines labs, uh, electrical labs, uh, transmission labs, fuels labs, all scattered throughout the facility. Uh, we pull vehicles into the classrooms, into the labs. We try to maintain actually about 140 training vehicles here within our program. Uh, and those will range in years and models, but 140 modern training vehicles ranging from uh, large class eight semi trucks to uh, electric vehicles to hybrid vehicles to performance vehicles. You'll see a, a wide variety of different vehicles here. Uh, uh, Grace, you talked about uh, Pico scopes. Uh, what, what some of the, uh, what, what is a Pico scope and what do you use that for? So Pico scope is a wonderful diagnostic aid where you can um, not only do like the functions of a multimeter where you're looking at uh, voltages, signals, you'll actually see the waveforms and it'll catch real-time data. Okay. It's very helpful. Yeah, uh, uh, we have over 30 of those picoscopes that we have throughout our labs. And so our students are hooking up a wide variety of diagnostic equipment up to the vehicles. Uh, we have uh, two-wheel drive chassis dynamometers, four-wheel drive chassis dynamometer, uh, engine dynamometers, transmission <laughs> dynamometer, uh, an assortment of equipment here. And uh, Stephanie, you mentioned that uh, you were glad that you actually took a tour. Yeah, um, definitely that kind of helped sold, or sold the program to me. Um, it just kind of, once you see the facility itself, it's absolutely breathtaking. It's massive. There's everything that you could possibly need here. Um, and then uh, a lot of the tours are led by uh, people who are in automotive ambassadors and are led by students often. And talking to someone who is a student 
was honestly very helpful in making my decision also. Yeah. And, and that's another piece that the ambassadors do as well. You guys provide tours to uh, the community, to uh, manufacturer executives and prospective students all the time. So the question that did come in is how can I get a tour? Probably came from your question saying that you were <laughs> glad that you took a tour. Well, how can you get a tour? Well, if you go again to the main SIU website, which is siu.edu, at the very top, you'll see a, a link at the very top, a button that says visit. If you click on that, that takes you to where you can plan a, uh, a, a visit actually to the main campus and you can get a tour of the main campus. And also they'll set up a tour with you here to the SIU Automotive Department. Now, if by chance that uh, uh, the main campus tour, things like that, uh, they're not open when, uh, uh, or they don't have any openings for when you're wanting to come, I do recommend to still plan on coming, but contact SIU Automotive directly at, you can see our website and our phone number up online, contact us directly and we'll set up a separate tour just for with SIU Automotive. And we'll take you through the labs, through the classrooms. We can sit down, talk to you about the curriculum and uh, those aspects. And again, I want to remind everybody that if you are on uh, our YouTube or our Facebook channel, to please go ahead, post up any questions that you may have. Uh, but also we had a question, will this video be available later for viewing? And the answer is yes. In fact, if you uh, take a look, it should be available up on our Facebook page, but also take a look at our YouTube page. Subscribe to our YouTube page and Facebook pages like those because we post up new videos. You want to see what the students are doing day in and day out. What are some of the student activities? I know there's videos up there on the car meet. There's uh, various different videos of some of the student activities, things like that. Uh, so if you want to see what's going on and what's happening at SIU Automotive, subscribe to our YouTube channel and take a look at uh, some of those great videos up there. In fact, uh, I'm not sure if we posted up, but I know one of the activities that the one of the automotive student groups got involved in just just held it the other week, was a Pinewood Derby contest. Mm -hmm. were, were either you able to make that or see that? Uh, yeah. I watched it, but I wasn't able to make <laughs> okay, it. Okay, okay. I was able to participate. It was a lot of fun. Okay, yeah. So if you're familiar with Pinewood Derby uh, racing, what that is, if Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts, but uh, we'll give you a, a, you can get a, a Pinewood Derby kit car. So basically it's a block of wood and some wheels and tires and parts and pieces that you put together. And uh, we have various different awards. So for the most creative design, uh, the best Saluki theme uh, types of awards, but also if you're familiar with racing these, it goes down a track. We have our own Pinewood Derby track and it's a timed race. And, but however, if you race these in Boy Scouts or, or any other type of activity, uh, we have some unique classes. So not only do you have the follows all the rules, uh, type of stock class. We have a modified class, which allows some extra unique performance parts, as well as uh, extra weight on the Pinewood Derby car. And then we actually had a uh, outlaw class, which is close to almost a no rules type of a, <laughs> a class. And so we had vehicles, uh, kit cars that had I saw one had a mouse trap built onto it, along with a CO2 air uh, charge canister that propelled the vehicle down. <laughs> it was a uh, li little crazy. But uh, yes, uh, take a look at our YouTube channel, take a look at our Facebook page, and you'll find uh, a lot of those videos about the program that the students have developed, some of the things they've got going on day in and day out. I know the automotive uh, technology organization earlier, they actually did a cosmic bowling night at the uh, bowling alleys mm -hmm. at the uh, student center. Uh, so thinking about main campus, we talked about the transportation center campus. Let's talk about main campus a little bit. What are some of the amenities that you guys have on main campus that you can partake in as students? Um, well, uh, there's a rec center, which is very close to um, where housing is on main campus. Um, so that's if you're more of like a gym rat and you enjoy going to the gym, that's a free kind of facility that is available to you. Um, there's also the student center that has a couple of restaurants. It's got the bowling alley that we went to and they hold um, events there from time to time. They're not really doing many now, but typically they have especially welcome events at the beginning of a semester. 
Um, some other things is the Morris Library. They have a computer lab. If you need a printer for any reason, they've got printing facilities. They've got plenty of books and plenty of study spaces. They also have more like private study rooms for if you and maybe a group of people uh, wanted to get together and study for like a test or something like that. Um, that's kind of an area for you guys to be able to meet together to be able to study. Um, and then other than that, it's just a very spacious, very pretty campus. There's a, we have Campus Lake, which is a, I think it's like a 2.1 mile walk all the way around it. And it's um, a great place to go for walks, stuff like that. Okay. And then uh, the Recreation Center, I think, Grace, you were talking a little bit earlier. What, is, what are some of the activities that, uh, uh, that, that happen uh, through the Rec Center for students? So... They are very expanded. They do, which you wouldn't think, but they do e-sport nights such as like FIFA or, um, but they also have rock climbing walls. They have classes such as like Zumba, kickboxing, um, swim, swim meets happen there. So there's a nice size pool. You can just go swim for yourself if, or you can be part of the SIU swim team. Um, and then there's racquetball and basketball. Yeah. And I, I think just about any activity you can imagine fencing <laughs> table tennis you name it yeah fencing i haven't heard of fencing there but okay they have fencing even huh they do. interesting okay and so yeah a lot of activities on campus uh, as well as here at the transportation education center uh, another question that came up earlier in one of our earlier sessions was about uh, tools and so coming into siu automotive you do have to have tools so sometimes your community college Automotive program uh, did not require you to have tools, uh, but here at SIU Automotive, you will need tools. This is a hands-on program. You will be working on cars and trucks uh, each day as you're going through this program. And so you will be needing some tools. And the basic tool set, it's your primary hand tools, which is your wrenches, screwdrivers, sockets, pliers, and of course, a, a good di digital voltometer. Now you can have any brand of tools but uh, we do recommend that you have a, a small uh, roll around cart or a small toolbox to uh, allow you to move these tools from one lab to another lab because one part of the semester you may be on one end of the building, then another part of the semester you may be on the other side of the building as well. So having that ability to move the tools uh, around is gonna be sort of important. Uh, the other piece uh, with tools is we have a wide variety of discounts set up for the students too. And uh, we do have that available online, uh, but we have discounts set up. Uh, some of these vary from say 20% discount to well over 50% discount. And it's gonna vary from tool vendor on there. But uh, you're gonna expect to pay roughly, depending upon the brand, things like that. Uh, you might need a $1,000 toolkit, or if you go to one of the higher line tool packages, it may be uh, about $3,000. And so thinking about tools, uh, Grace, uh, what kind of tools do you have? Uh, aside from the basics, I have tools from previous jobs I've kind of collected here and there. So like uh, very specific. So like uh, caliper piston compressor, um, also like ones that help rotate them in for the distant I'm sorry, different pistons and mm -hmm, calipers. Mm -hmm. then, um, what brand of hand tools do you have? All kinds. All kinds. There's, okay. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't have to have any particular brand. Uh, if you already have tools, you want to uh, piece together what you have uh, on that, uh, that is fine with us. And then, Stephanie, what did you do for tools? Um, so I had some pretty basic tools already before I started, just um, from collecting them um, at high school or at previous jobs, like Grace said. Um, but then before I started, I bought the um, Snap-on tool kind of package that mm -hmm. they had with um, the Student Excellency Program discount, so. Ah, okay, awesome. Yep, and so having tools uh, is an important piece as you go through the program. Uh, another related question on that besides tools is also textbooks. And purchasing textbooks is uh, something that you'll need for a wide variety of classes. But you'll see in SIU Automotive, uh, we actually have a free textbook loan program set up. Uh, so your typical textbook for a course can vary from $100 to $200. So in order to save our students monies uh, in your funds, we actually implemented a free textbook loan program. So you do not need to purchase textbooks 
for any of your SIU automotive classes. Uh, we have those available to you for free, actually, if you wanted those. Uh, but you may have to purchase some textbooks for any of your main campus general education types of classes. Uh, so again, if uh, you're joining us live, if you have questions about uh, transferring to SIU, questions about classes, uh, uh, one of the questions that, that came up earlier last time we uh, in our last live stream that we did is how are classes going to be different from what you're currently taking at the community college to what you're taking here uh, at SIU. And it was specifically focused in on your automotive technical classes. And so coming in as a transfer student where you've already completed your lower level automotive technical classes from your community college, again, you're gonna be starting in your upper level, three and 400 level technical classes here at SIU. These are more advanced types of courses. What we're typically gonna do each class We'll probably start with a little bit of a review and baselining everybody to make sure everybody understands these basic fundamentals. And then we move forward. Uh, and we move fairly quickly in each of our automotive classes. Your automotive classes, another unique thing about how we teach our courses is our theory is that we're going to immerse you into a particular subject. We're going to focus and concentrate on that subject each day of the week until that class is done and you've learned and mastered that. And then you're gonna move on to another class. And so uh, the automotive classes, uh, you said you're both actually in the same class right now. Is that a five week or a 10 week class that you're in right now? Um, so we're currently in a five week um, and then we'll move on to another five week and we had a five week at the beginning. Okay, all right. So some of your automotive technical classes, uh, depending upon the material, is that you may go from a five-week class to another five-week class to a third five-week class each semester. And then other semesters, again, depending upon the material and what needs to be covered in the class, you may have a 10-week course followed by a five-week course or vice versa. So that way you are focusing on one subject at a time. You're not having to, well, I've got this in the morning for a uh, electrical class and I have this in the afternoon for a diagnostics class. Now let's focus on one subject at a time and uh, it, we've been very successful with this. Uh, here at SIU Automotive we've been doing this since 1952 and so we have a great track record. Uh, our graduates have gone on to become uh, executive vice, global vice president of General Motors, global vice president of Toyota, uh, to becoming small business owners, to becoming district managers, to becoming field service engineers, to becoming technical trainers, to becoming serviceability engineers. But our mission is that we are moving to advance this industry forward. That's another aspect that's unique about SIU Automotive is that we are the only automotive technology program in the nation, actually in the world, that's part of a major research university. And people go, well, what's that mean, part of a research university? And so our mission is to connect you as a student with our industry. And that, let's not just be talking and teaching the latest and greatest of technology that's out there, but let's work with our industry partners to advance our industry. What is possible? What is new? What can we maybe be doing in our industry? Um, now, I believe, are both of you in, uh, in the class that we have working with the SciTech application mm -hmm. right now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And so that's a great example of advanced research that our students are involved in here at SIU. We are working with a company that's developing an artificial intelligence app that provides uh, voice-activated service information off your cell phone. And have you, where our students are actually using it. Have you used it in class? Yes, I've used it plenty of times. <laughs> okay, and so yeah, our students are now uh, putting that application through its paces, testing it, and then providing feedback and input back to that company as they're refining, looking for dish, different options, different features, uh, different ways of improving their product. Again, that's a unique part about SIU Automotive is our mission is not only great teaching and training, but also let's prepare you for the future by let's develop what's gonna maybe be coming in the future. And so uh, again, if you do have questions, uh, we are monitoring the chat session. We will be posting this video up so you can review it later. Uh, 
but we've been connected now for a while, and I think we've got all the questions thus far that have come in answered. And so with that, again, if you have questions, you can always call us at 618-453-4024, or you can always reach us at autotech at siu.edu, and we'll work to get those questions answered. Again, I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. I want to thank Stephanie. Thank you, Grace, for joining us. Thank you. On that. Uh, anything that we might have missed that you can think of, either either one of you? No, I just, I love the decision to come down here. Okay. I, I agree with Grace. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, with that, then, we're going to sign off. Again, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, let us know what questions you have. We hope to see you here at SIU. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>